What is up, guys? This is Shipmec. I had a catastrophic failure. Okay, I'm being I'm being a little dramatic. My uh, my flight simulator kept crashing on me when I was trying to do videos, and my uh, M2 drive, my one terabyte M2 drive, was getting full. I couldn't figure out what the heck was causing it, so I decided, you know what, we're going scorched earth. Uh, wiped the whole thing, deleted it, reinstalled Windows, uh, reinstalled Microsoft Flight Simulator, started over from the beginning. Now, what was actually kind of cool is Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, stored my settings online. So when I reinstalled the simulator, I'm assuming that's how they did it. Um, boom, everything was right there. Uh, I didn't have to reset it, everything up. So the first thing that I did, uh, I come into Preset Manager, and I create a new profile, and I call it that H145, all right? And then I did the same thing for my throttle. And I have different ones for different aircraft and all that good stuff. But um, the important part is is that I have a, a dedicated uh, profile for my H145. And it's very important because it's a pain in the butt jumping back and forth on this thing. All right, so I'm going to come back over here, and we're going to start out um, the control bindings. All right, so um, on this left side, it tells you what the function is. On the right side is the binding. Uh, and then down here, when you get into other important bindings, you get into some notes. Um, I'm not going to go into all of this because the autopilot functions I covered in a autopilot deep dive. And then I'm also going to do a separate video that is a deep dive of just the trim system because that seems to be causing a lot of confusion about what the trim is, what functions it provides, what it, how to use it properly, uh, what the different modes are and all that. So uh, I'm going to try to stay out of the autopilot upper modes in, in that trim deep dive. Um, but that I'm not going to go into any of that on this video. So um, pull up this control and binding from Dave's page and it'll have this Airbus H145 documentation uh, and then under controls and bindings, uh, primary flight controls. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I've got this up on one screen and I'm going to jump over to Microsoft Flight Simulator and I'm just going to start running down this list. Uh, so if you guys are wondering where I'm getting this information from, it's on that other um, control and binding section of the uh, 145 HPG documentation. All right, so the first one is a collective. Uh, it says throttle axis or collective axis. All right, so on my this is my throttle uh, I'm using right here. And I like to use the helicopter name so I'm going to go to collective axis and I'm going to look specifically for the axis. I'm going to select that, select that and I will move my collective and validate. All right. Now for whatever reason this doesn't actually process up and down. All right. I don't know why a Sobo does that like that but whatever. All right so going top to bottom I'm going to jump over to my joystick and I'm looking at cyclic longitudinal and cyclic lateral. So in the name, I'm just going to say cyclic and there is my longitudinal. I'm going to select that. I'm going to select that and I'm going to push forward on the stick. I'll validate it. And then just to make sure, I'm going to come over here to input and I'll push forward on the stick and I'm going to make sure that's there. I'm going to do the same thing with my cyclic lateral. All right. So I've already mapped that. It remembered it from 1.0. And oh, by the way, uh, I happened to uh, completely obliterate my computer and rebuild it at the exact same time that he released 2.0. So it's just kind of a happy accident. I had no idea that was coming. Um, it kind of worked out pretty well. All right, so my yaw pedals, I'm going to do the same thing. My pedals are actually part of my throttle. Uh, they, they plug in right here to this. So I'm going to jump over to that. And I will um, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, it's part of this right here. So uh, that's weird that it's showing that. All right, so for my pedals, I will select uh, this, and I'm going to move my pedals, and I'll show you. Uh, 
the same thing tail rotor axis is what I chose because again you can use rudder axis or tail rotor axis but helicopters don't have rudders they have tail rotors so I like to stick with that uh, so basically I just type in in this search right here tail rotor axis click that click that move it validate all good um, it shows here that it has a reverse axis we'll see once I get in the simulator whether that's necessary or not all right so beep trim now we're coming on down to the beep trim All right, so uh, increase rotor longitudinal trim or decrease rotor longitudinal trim. All right, so um, that's on the cyclic. So I'm going to select a coolie hat on my cyclic, and I'm using this one right up here because it looks like the one that's on the actual H145 collective. That's the only reason I'm picking that. Um, and the thumb kind of rests naturally on it. So um, I'm sorry. I can't read good today cyclic pitch so we're gonna go over to the cyclic right here so for that I'm picking the only coolie hat that I have on my cyclic uh, kind of makes sense uh, so the pitch is for and aft so increase or decrease trim so forward is decrease and aft is increase all right so same thing um, I'm gonna type in right up here I'm going to type in increase rotor or decrease rotor I'm going to find rotor longitudinal trim I'm going to select that select that and click the button and you guys should be able to figure out how to do that all right uh, the same thing with roll um, so that was longitudinal I'm going to do the same thing with roll with the right and left so um, go ahead and put those in and you'll notice that forward should be decrease rotor longitudinal trim and aft should be increase rotor longi longitudinal trim all right yaw pedals is going to be on the collective so it's this same coming back over to my collective it's the same coolie hat right here but now i'm going to be doing left and right or forwards and backwards i guess but however however yours is set up um so I did up and down as my collective, and then my rudder trim, um, I'm doing left and right. All right, so coming on down to other important bindings, we got our cyclic trim release. And I'm not going to get into this. Like I said, we're going to go to deep dive on that. But I'm choosing button number three right here because my thumb lays on it naturally. You're going to be using that button more than anything. All right, so let me hit that, and it is rotor trim reset. All right. The next one that we're going to go to is AP backup on. All right. And I chose this one right down here because normally that's a four way on your cyclic, but you're not going to use it very often. So I'm doing number six right here. And that is autopilot on. All right. Now, autopilot off you would think is your, a, your AP backup SAS cut. But it is not. Autopilot off is actually your autopilot upper modes off. So it degrades you from an upper mode down to your basic attitude mode. All right. And I'm going to pick this number four right over here. Now, normally on the helicopter, it's right down here somewhere. Um, but that's not what we're going to use. We are going to, um, we're, I'm going to use this one right over here. So number four button four and I had that for something so we're gonna clear it validate it va va clear it va what the heck there that was weird all right and so now we're gonna go auto boy this is so buggy all right autopilot off Clear current input, and now I'm going to select that one, that button four, and validate. Now, the reason that that was shown as button number nine is because I instinctively thought on, off, on, off. But nope, I want that to be the next one to be AP backup cut. All right, so toggle disengage autopilot. All right, so that's that one right there. I'm going to scan it. I'm going to choose that 
button right here. So on, off. So the first press is going to knock out your parallel trims, and then the second press, and as well as half of your seamas, and the second press is going to knock out all of your seamas, and you'll be fully um, unstabilized. And if you want to know about what any of that is, go to my autopilot deep dive, and it'll show you. It, you know, I'll talk about that in that video. All right. Um, so APGTC ground trajectory command mode. Um, we're going to come right here, and actually I'm going to check to see if it's, and it is, toggle auto hover. So you're just going to type in toggle, toggle auto hover right here by name. I've mapped it to this because that's where it's at on the actual aircraft. <clears throat> All right. Now, reset message list enunciator switch off. So this is uh, clears your uh, FND. <clears throat> Uh, or your master list actually is, is a better uh, better way is what it's called. So it clears your ML. Or it's also called acknowledge the act button. All right, so uh, I am going to put that on my cyclic, but again, I don't have a whole lot of um, buttons here to choose from. <clears throat> so I am going to choose... Let's see. Let's go uh, button number 14 right here. That seems like a pretty good, because uh, it's actually in the lower right corner of the FND, as well as it's kind of down here, the pinky button um, on the D2. So let's come right here, and let's say, uh, what are we doing? Annunciator switch off. I'm going to scan it. I'm going to push that button. I'm going to validate, and then I'm, it told me I had two of them right there, so that's no good. Let's clear this out. Clear it, clear it, clear it, click. Y'all hear me click? There we go. Boy, I'll tell you what, that frustrates me to no end. All right, we're going to get rid of that one. Clear it, validate. So, enunciator switch off is the only one on that. All right, so we're going to clear that back out. Uh, OEI high, low, so... On that, we are going to use, my goodness, this frustrates me, how you got to click this 15 times sometimes to get it to do what you want it to do. There we go. All right, so arm auto throttle. All right, and actually, let me cancel that because that needs to be on my throttle. So OEI high low is normally up under. You got a, on the bottom of the collective. You got a trigger to release the uh, force trim, or the, the a trim release on that. There is no force trim. There's just a friction device on the collective. So to release the friction device, you you squeeze the trigger, and then right next to the trigger uh, is that OEI high low. So I'm going to choose button number three because I think that's that's that feels about where that OEI high low should be. Um, so let's go arm auto throttle. I'm going to choose that one right there and we will call it good. All right, so the next one is the go around auto throttle to go around. So we're going to choose auto throttle to go around. All right, so for that, I'm going to choose this button right down here, number one. Um, the go around button is on the top of the, the collective and you hit it with your thumb. So I think that, that number one, as I grab hold of this and, and I, you know, I lay my, my fingers across the top, my thumb kind of sets actually naturally right on this button. Uh, but it's an easy stretch to get down there to that. So I'm going to use that one. Uh, Bambi bucket dump cargo detach fire weapons. All that is going to be toggle yaw damper. All right, so toggle yaw damper. All right, and that button is actually uh, up on the top, um, but I don't have any more buttons over here that I can use. So what I'm going to use is this number two right over here. Um, and I'll just kind of have to remember that... Um, 
that you can click that as much as you want and it's not going to work. Oh, this is so frustrating. I don't, there we go. All right, so this one right here is going to be my OEI high low. This one right here is going to be to release my load or to pick up a load. And then um, this one right here is OEI high low. So that's going to take a little bit of muscle memory to remember that. But I think we can make it work. Uh, now, the other thing I forgot to completely do on all of this is we're supposed to be using on release logic. So instead of on press, we're going to switch to on release. And now I've got to go back through all of these and do on release. And the problem is, is it, there's a bounce. A bounce is a is a term uh, that that we can we can use for that. Um, it, sometimes it'll it'll do it twice. So I'm just going to go through everything, and I will do. And actually, no, I want this one on press because you should be able to hold that down. So only the buttons that I want to only be pressed once is is what I'm going to go through. So I'm going to come back to this, and we are going to select that one for my auto hover, and that will be on release. Oh, oh, nope, nope. And then my trim reset. Nope, I want that one on press because I'm going to hold that button down. Uh, but this, my autopilot, my upper mode's off. I'll do on release as well. And then the same with my buttons down here for autopilot on. Why? Can somebody tell me why? Sometimes I'm required to push this multiple times to get it to work. So I'm just going through all the buttons that I just mapped and changing them to on release. And I think that should be it. Uh, the one thing I do want to do to real quick, button number one, this trigger, I want to make sure that that is not mapped to anything inside the flight simulator. Um, you do what you want with it. But uh, what I like to do with that is to set it up to where that's my uh, mic, my transmit. Uh, and I, I basically use that in VATSIM. So it really doesn't matter to y'all. All right, so um, I'm looking at this other stuff here. I'm not going to use any of those uh, latching or any any of that stuff like that. So that's going to be pretty much it for your flight controls. Um, I think one thing that I forgot to talk about was in assistance options. Under piloting, turn all this crap off. You don't need that. Um, we're professionals here. Uh, the only one that I think I have is gliders, tow plane takeoff assistance. I don't fly gliders. Um, so, whatever. All right, so let's jump in and let's make sure everything's good. So I'm just going to come over here to my home airport. And I don't care about startups right now. So we're going to start right out here on the runway which should set me up to everything running. And then I'm going to make sure that all of this stuff works. The directions that I want it to move, all moves. Uh, the pedals work the right way, all that good stuff. Um, and then I'm going to check all my buttons and make sure all that works. So the other thing that we're going to be doing uh, right now is testing out the new version 2.0 because this is actually my first flight of the 2.0 and I might do one in a little while that, uh... oh, you idiot, <laughs> I should have checked my acknowledge button. Uh, so I tell you what, let's just do this. 
Um, no, I don't want to wait for that to spool down and come back up. So we're just going to jump up here. And we'll turn a transfer pump off. And now I should have... There we go. And I'll hit that reset button, and it works. So let's jump back up here. We'll turn the transfer pump back on. And jump out. All right, so I'm going to go cyclic forward, and that appears to correlate. Cyclic back, cyclic left, cyclic right. We we'll go right pedal, left pedal, and boy, that uh, that right pedal jumps quick. There's about half pedal right there, and it looks like yeah, I'm at the full stop. So I'm going to have to figure out how to adjust that. Left pedal actually seems to work pretty close uh, now let's pull a little bit of collective here so we're going to come up and i like it yep seems legit okay um so let's go ahead and pull it up to a hover and we'll check the uh, trim release I do like that the pedals are a lot less aggressive in this version. Uh, that at version 1.0, I was noticing that yaw stabil or uh, yaw control was crazy. I love this already. Uh, this is incredible. All right, so I'm going to let go of my trim release and let's see what happens here. All right, and I do have follow-up trim on looks like my breakouts are set a little high I'll, I'll we'll we'll get that set up in a minute um follow-up trim is active it appears all right so uh let's go double tap gtch and boom so that looks good now let's do upper mode off and that does correlate so that's good and i'll tell you what real quick let's go back into Hover, hold, and grab a little bit of that. No, not vertical speed, you putts. Cruise height. <clears throat> That's what I wanted. All right, and now let's check our collective. So I'm going to come straight up, cruise height. Boom, that looks good. And the left, right beep appears to be working. All right, let's try right. And I'm on the cyclic, so we're going to do left. And actually, I should have my hover mode up. Forward. And backwards. And backwards appears to be working. Quite aggressively, I may add. Alright, so uh, that all looks good. Let's do a SAS AP cut. Oh, yeah, it works. And let's build it back up. Let's double tap it. And now we're going to go into recovery mode. And you'll see right there, um, it picks me up at 35 knots. And then my heading and my current altitude. So that is all good right there. It appears to be working properly. All right, let's try go around mode. Kachuga. All right, we're going to climb at a thousand feet a minute, so go around mode does work. Uh, and let me see real quick what the other one was. Uh, OEI high low, so let's go. Uh, oh, okay. I'll tell you what, let's just do this. Let's let's pick up an altitude, a heading. And an airspeed. Let's build up that airspeed a little bit there. I'm going to try not to go inadvertent. And let's acknowledge that. 
and let's try to go back into training mode. Why is training mode aborted? I tell you what, let's do an actual legit OEI. How about it? Alright, I'm going to go hands on. And let's go ahead and pull this thing up. And there's my topping. It does work. You see it right there. Why is my rotor I should not be getting a low rotor. Now if I go above that then I will get a low rotor. Yep. But if I top it I should be able to continue. Now I'm in the 30 second range. My 30 second timer should start ticking away. And if I go above it my rotor will start to come down and it does where's my boop 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 there it is alright top it back let's come out of that two minute range and bring the engine back online alrighty so, that all seems legit. I think that's everything that we wanted to check for right now. Um, I tell you what, let me... Uh, yeah, I already checked the uh, collective. Now, I do want to check one thing. Oh, I have follow-up trim on both. So, let's do this. Let's go hover only. All right. And I'm going to bring my dead zones down on both of these There's feet on hands on alright so now when I do this and let go oh he cleaned that up too man that is so much better and then if I do this boy I'm about to go inadvertent here Alright, aircraft damage is on, gameplay is realistic, I have centering springs, stability is at zero, oh boy, I am literally going inadvertent, so let's go ahead and, there we go, and let's see here, Now, I am below my rotor desync line, so I should be, my rotor should be climbing right now, because I should be in an auto. I am pretty well below that rotor desync line. So. But, overall, I would say that, uh, a pretty good improvement. Let's go ahead and expedite down here to the uh, to the ramp. Definitely requires uh, a little bit more. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What was that? That was weird. I did. Uh, trim release it kind of nosed over a little bit on me um i would say that the the pedals in this version 2.0 are a lot more realistic not quite as aggressive and then also the collective uh requires you to actually manipulate the collective a little bit more uh than it did in the one point of the latest version of the 1.0 uh, which i will say is also pretty realistic So I like it. Uh, I'm getting down there a little bit low. I'm, I'm, my mind stays pegged on that three-foot hover, 
which was standard for the C2, uh, but uh, and I think it at four foot for this one. But uh, as a SOP, we like to go 10 feet uh, at the hover because the uh, the tail on this thing sits so low that you will smack that thing on the ground in a heartbeat, and that is expensive. So, I like it. So let's go ahead and set it down. Now, the one thing I will say is that we're still not quite getting right, is this thing on the ground should be sitting about three and a half degrees nose up. So let me go ahead and see if I can just kind of... All right. Actually, yeah, that's right. Three and a half degrees nose up. But at a hover, the first thing I should have to do is pull it up about that much. It should hover right about there. But I'm <clears throat> I'm hovering at the exact same height as the aircraft sits on the ground. All right. So normally when you pick this thing up, well five degrees yeah that's let's see let's see what happens let's just set it down nice and gentle as gentle as possible All right that looks about it right there and then I'm just gonna yeah we get a little bit now the one thing that it doesn't do is that left skid low at the hover. It hovers pretty level. And in reality, you should be hovering about like that. But again, we're talking a whole lot of nothing on that. So, all right, uh, be looking for that deep dive on the trim. Uh, hopefully have that coming out here soon. And uh, yeah, you guys. Fly safe, have fun.